How's it going guys and welcome to a video that will have 50 PVM related tips and tricks. I hope that everybody finds something in this video that is helpful to them and hopefully this can improve your gameplay quite a bit in any way whatsoever. I will not be wasting long on the intro as of course this is going to be a very long video so hopefully you guys enjoy. Leave a like if you do, subscribe to the channel if you are new, comment down below any extra tips that you may be able to think of that I did not include here. There will be timestamps in the description separating the tips and tricks up from things like the settings tips, magic tips, range tips and general tips and whatever else ends up getting into the video. So other than that, let's get started. A lot of this is likely going to be recorded here by the uh, the dummies in water tree if possible. But otherwise we're going to start off with the settings tips so let's get going. All right, so our first tip for settings is going to be that you can display additional action bars if you haven't already got them active. Now, this is useful because you can slot more abilities, more items, and more food. To do this, go to settings, go down to gameplay, and then combat and action bar, and then action bar. In here, you just want to go to where it says display additional action bars and make sure you set these as what you need them to be. If you go through these and set them through to the action bars that you want, you can then get more action bars, as you can see on screen now, and you can slot anything you want into these and set keybinds nice and easily. Next up, coming back into settings, of course, we are going to want to go down to controls. And then if you scroll down this list, you get towards where it says action bar, right at the bottom of action bar, you'll have separate options to keybind things that are really useful. For example, you can have auto retaliate, quick prayer, special attack, your familiar special attack and target cycling all in here, along with area loot and action button being things like the button from Raksha and care pack, anything else that's on your screen that you may need to use. You can keybind these without slotting them onto your action bar, so you can save yourself some slots on here but also it just means that you've got nice quick access to all of these things in case you need them in the future next up we have action bar binding now what this will do is allow you to switch between your action bars when you equip different types of weapons at the moment you can see that my action bar is set to number three which is my magic action bar if i change to melee weapons it automatically switches to number one giving me all of my melee act uh, all of my melee abilities without me needing to change this here or press the numbers like shift and number one or whatever it is so if i change back to magic now it will automatically change back to magic to do this go to settings go down to gameplay combat and action bar and action bar binding and then once you're on here you just want to pick action bar binding setup one these the setup ones aren't like specific to action bar number one you have to actually set your preset in here so what would you what you would do is pick the weapon style so for my number three for example will be any magic style and then you've got the action bar that's going to change which is the main action bar for me and then also you've got your action bar preset which is action bar preset number three so you want to change that to whatever it wants to be normally and then of course once you save that when you change between the weapons you'll get this result next up is going to be manual spell casting this is really important if you want to use magic and fortic auto attack or it's just useful in a lot of scenarios where you want to maybe use a different auto cast for different reasons which we'll talk about in just a second so to do this you want to go to settings then you want to go down to combat and action bar underneath the gameplay tab go to action bar and then make sure manual spell casting is ticked right here once that is done it'll allow you to do things like this where you can use a key bind for different spells and it won't change your auto cast ability so my auto cast is set to insight fear if i click on that you'll see that's what i'm casting but if i use a key bind i can use blood barrage or i can use ice barrage whenever i want to and i can cycle between those and whatever i want to do it's really useful for being able to use like Fortic at the right time, freeze any mon monsters and stuff in Elite Dungeons, all that sort of good stuff. So it's very useful to know about, especially if you are someone who does main magic quite a lot. The next useful thing is going to be the ability cooldown timer. You can display those nice and easily in the settings, and what it will do is allow you to know exactly when another ability is going to be ready again. So if I use Dragon Breath now, you can see a little number next to it in the top right corner telling me when that's available again. Yes, you have the normal like shadowed little clock sort of thing on there to show you but having an actual exact number can be very useful especially for things like sunshine to turn this on you want to go into settings of course go down to action bar underneath the combat and action bar tab and then just make sure the very first option is ticked that says toggle ability cooldown timer this is very useful like i say for making sure you can use your uh, abilities at the right time and having that actual number and the information there especially for thresholds and ultimates uh, i find very useful Next up, we can avoid ourselves from accidentally misclicking on our Beast of Burden or any familiar for that matter and interacting with that while we are PVMing. Sometimes this can be deadly, especially at places like a Raxo with the, the swipe and stuff, so this is quite important to know about. Now, what you can do is go to settings, of course, come down into the combat and action bar tab, and then go to the choose option menu. In the choose option menu, you want to have the hide familiar options available. If you don't have this ticked, 
you'll know that you can interact with your Ripper Demon. You can uh, you can you can accidentally misclick on that in fights when you're trying to run away. And rather than running, your character will just stand there and talk to your Ripper Demon or your Yak or whatever it is you've got. So have that ticked, and it'll stop that, and it'll allow you to click through that familiar, and your character will just keep moving. Next up, I quite often get people asking me, how can you zoom out so far? Because mine's locked way closer than that. What you want to do to do this, which is very useful for certain bosses so you can see everything that's going on, is going to settings, go down to camera, and then in camera, you want to change this to either freedom or freedom classic. If you have it on classic or modern, it, what it will do is it will lock the amount of distance you can actually go away from, and it'll stop about here. But with the actual other options, you can zoom out much further, making it so much easier to see certain things like it, uh, Glacor and uh, just, just get some really nice views pretty much. But this is very useful in a lot of situations. The next tip is to make sure that you have Accept Aid enabled. This is really useful in some PVM situations, especially for learners, as sometimes people will take things like Intercept or they will take spells that like Heal Other, allowing them to protect you in certain situations. So. What this means is, for example, if I cast Intercept on Salty Llama at the moment, any damage that he takes will now go to me instead, meaning for 10 seconds, I can make sure he does not die. To do this, you wanna go into settings, go down to gameplay, chat and social, accept aid, and then everything in here can be set to everybody, but just have the teleport other spells set to nobody. This way you can't get teleported to the wilderness, things like that, but everything else like Luna spells and stuff is absolutely welcome and that's absolutely fine, right? You can get saved and, and, saved and healed in fights. So keep an eye out for the intercept because this is pretty much what it'll look like. When he takes damage, I'll take the damage instead and I can deal with that by using things that reflect and whatnot. So yeah. The next thing isn't necessarily something you have to do in settings to make it work, but basically you can control your camera and move it around without W, S, A and D by using the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel by clicking it in and dragging around. It gives you a nice smooth control of where your camera is going and it is really useful to be able to know about because if you want to rebind W, S, A and D, which are really comfortable keybinds, you can now do that and you can use that for full manual or any special abilities, whatever you want to use it for. So it's quite useful to know this. I quite often get people asking how there is so many keybinds available to myself and how I manage to go through it all. But if you use shift and alt and control, you can actually set a hell of a lot more different keybinds than if you didn't use these. So if you want to set a keybind to something else, you can literally right click it, press customize keybind, and then you can set in here what it by pressing the keys that you want it to be. But you can use alt and six, meaning you can have a second keybind for number six by using the alt button as well. You can do this with control and you can do this with shift, meaning that your six key, if you have one on your mouse or anything or whatever's nearby, you can have that bound to three different things, just modifying it with control, shift and alt. This one is gonna be more useful for most people who like to AFK stuff, but don't like to miss out on big drops. If you come into settings, go down to item drops and then loop beams, you can actually change the value of your loop beams to make sure that you don't miss any drops depending what boss you're on. For example, if you're AFK and Vindicta, you can set this to something like 1 million, and that way anything over the drop rate of 1 million coins on the Grand Exchange will notify you. But if you set it to something like 300K, and you go somewhere like Hellware, then you know that every time you've got a drop worth picking up over 300k, it will give you a loot beam. So you can change your loot beam however you want to do it, whenever you want to do it, and it's really useful for when you're AFKing stuff. Okay, so moving on to some magic tips. The first one that I have for you is that you can actually release Detonate once you've charged it with an auto attack and any other ability, so long as you are fast enough. You have to do this all in the same tick and it is a little bit tricky to get used to, but once you do it, it can do a lot of damage and you can combine it with things like Tsunami or Wild Magic to do a hell of a lot of damage all in one go. Basically, you want to have your target selected, charge up your Detonate, and then you have to have the keybind for an auto attack, Detonate, and then whatever ability you want to use all pretty much nice and easy to use. So I'm gonna press Shift E for the Ice Barrage, then Shift W to release the Detonate, and then Shift A to use Dragon Breath. It will look like this. As you can see, there was three hits on the dummy at the same time, one from the Auto Attack, one from the Detonate, and one from the Dragon Breath. Next up, for you guys that don't use Fortic Auto Attack, you can actually still use an odd ability force here and there whenever you use things like Sunshine or Defense Abilities. What you want to do is, as you're casting off your abilities, basically just make sure you have one of the abilities keybound in a nice comfortable place anyway, and you don't have to switch between weapons for this, you can do it on whatever weapon you are on. So if I just use off any abilities here, whenever I use a Defensive or Sunshine, I can then press my Auto Ability and then the next ability to make sure that I fire off an Auto. So. 
basically I'm going to want to use my defense and then use the auto and another ability and you can see that the both of them fire off you saw the animation for the blood barrage and it is a good way to increase the bit of damage now the only thing that you need to notice is as I use the defensive I will have to use my auto just as the global cooldown is about to end Next up is Fortic Auto Attacking. To do this, you will need a wand, an orb, and a staff, but this can increase your damage by quite a lot. I believe it's about 7%, and it does take quite a little bit of effort to do, but it is worth it, and it can be useful in more situations than just getting damage, and I'll talk about that in the next tip. To do this, you want to have a keybind for your wand, orb, and staff, and also a keybind for the spell that you want to Fortic. Make sure you have manual spell casting on, like we mentioned earlier, and then when you have your target available, you can use any ability that isn't channeled. So you want to use the ability on your wand and orb first, and then change to your staff immediately then as soon as you see the global cooldown flash on your action bar then you want to press the keybind for your ice barrage or whatever spell you do have and then press your ability straight after that like I say, this can give you quite a bit of damage increase, but it's also very useful in situations that I'm going to talk about next. Next up is knowing that if you are four ticking or you are able to use these defensives and then fire off an auto attack, you can actually make good use of these in places like elite dungeons because each spell does have secondary effects. So for example, if you're running through an elite dungeon, you can use things like ice barrage to freeze up any minions that are chasing you through the dungeon. You can just keep them stuck there and you can just basically forget about them. I use this on the rogues and stuff to make sure they don't use their spec on me and I keep them out of the way. Next up, of course blood spells will give you healing and then after that you can use things like uh, entangle if you use spellbook swap to be able to actually keep things in place for a long time which is really useful at places like telos so magic does have a lot of versatility and i, I just think this is like one of the most interesting things about actually using magic this next tip should increase your DPS a little bit if you are 4 ticking as well. What you can actually do is force to get the bound or stun damage from rack, assuming the target is actually stunnable. You can do this by 4 ticking with ice barrage before you use rack. So if you use an ice spell followed by rack, the target will be stunned or bound and you can actually get the damage in every single time. It's super useful to know about because make sure your attack can hit between 37 and 188 percent rather than 18 and 94. Next up is that you know already probably that you can use Greater Chain to connect something together and then you can hit all of those targets with the next ability, right? So you, most of you will know that. However, what you can actually do is use Greater Chain and get three abilities as long as you do what I am about to do. So you link the target together with Greater Chain, use Great Concentrated Blast, before it finishes you change to a staff and then you use Omni Power or any other ability that you want to use. It'll look like this. That way you can get a lot more extra damage out because you get a couple of hits off Great Concentrated Blast and you still get to use anything else that you want to use afterwards. You can use this with any ability, it doesn't have to be Omni Power. You can use it with Bleeds if you wanted to. As long as you use Great Concentrated Blast and then you cancel that first and use your second ability next. So it can give you some extra AoE and it's really good for clearing mobs. If you use Tsunami and then use Tendrils on Magic, you end up gaining a lot of adrenaline really quickly. Using Insight Fear makes this better as Tsunami can be used at 40%, but you can gain a lot of adrenaline by using Tendrils directly after using Tsunami. You will have to be overloaded to guarantee that every single hit crits, but your adrenaline gain is ridiculously good. You can also pair Tsunami up with Greater Concentrated Blast and Greater Chain to actually allow yourself to get even more adrenaline as long as there's multiple targets. So, using these three dummies here, if I use Tsunami and then use my Greater Chain, they're all linked together. So if I use Greater Concentrated Blast now, watch what happens to my adrenaline. So every crit, even on secondary targets, will increase your adrenaline. That was without Grimoire. If I use a Grimoire, it'll be even better. When using Carapax Wrist Wraps, it is possible to actually have a full damage Combustor walked if you use Dragon Breath first and then use Combust as the target is already walking. You can see that here with the example of Raksha. This will get you the max amount of damage possible from using Combust with the Carapax Wrist Wraps. Otherwise, just use Combust first, make sure he walks, and then use Dragon Breath. If you're PVMing with a learner, you can use this on any combat style, but you can bring along Intercept, which is a magic spell from the Ancient Curses. And as you can see here, Charmies is not using any gear, he is not using any prayers, but he is not taking any damage because I've used Intercept on him. So you can use this to help learners get through the fights and get to see all the mechanics and also just make their experience a little bit easier to make sure that they can get through and learn the boss properly. It's also worth bringing along to places like Masses and stuff, so if you see anyone who does get caught out, you can quickly save their life. But do just keep in mind all of their damage will go to you, so you have to be ready for it. Using things like Reflect or Debilitate or even Barricade can be super useful. Great Concentrated Blast increases the next ability's chance at critting by 5% for each hit that you do land with the ability. That being said, it also increases 5% each time it hits itself. So it increases itself 
and it increases the next ability. This is really important to know about because you can use it before thresholds to increase the chance of that threshold critting. Okay, so moving on to some range tips now. The first one I'm going to talk about is Needle Strike, and that is because it gives you a 7% flat damage increase to your next attack. This works if you use it on a single target ability, your next hit will get 7% damage increase. However, if you use it on a hit that actually does two different bits of damage, the first two hits will be buffed. So if you use Greater Ricochet, the first two hits will be buffed. If you use Snapshot, both hits will be buffed. And if you use Rapid Fire, the first two hits will be buffed for 7% damage increase each. This is really important to know as you will want to use this before using quite a lot of abilities during range. Next up is knowing that if you use Chinchompers on range while on Evolution of Combat, it doesn't only make AoE apply to your actual uh, auto attacks. It still works on all of your abilities as well. This can mean that you can apply things like multiple combust to targets. It means you can apply it like multiple snapshots and you can do a hell of a lot of AOE damage just by equipping some chinchompers while clearing out things. This can be incredibly useful for getting through elite dungeons really quickly if you're using range as you can clear off most of the mobs very quickly. If you have great ricochet, you can actually get quite a lot of advantage out of using this with certain types of bolts. If you use a Hydrix bolt switch with greater ricochet, you can get yourself a ton of adrenaline really quickly. As you can see that one ricochet gave me 33% adrenaline, but it can actually end up being quite a bit more. Also, the same applies to things like Onyx Bolts as well. As long as the proc doesn't have a cooldown, you can end up getting multiple procs in one greater ricochet. For the people chasing personal records, using darts as your weapon overrides will actually increase your animation very slightly, meaning across the entire kill, you can end up getting a slightly faster kill time. It is not huge, but it is definitely a thing, so maybe keep saying some darts if you are all about getting the faster kill times. The range 99 skill cape actually gives you a 20% increase to your ammo special effect chance. So this means that if you are using this as your max capes effect or if you're using it as a main cape, you can actually get procs from your bolts 20% more often. This is really good and of course it is definitely worth having. When using ECB spec, you get diminishing returns for using higher hitting abilities. For example, if you hit 10,000 damage in one hit, your soul split would only give you an average of 1,780 damage, assuming the target is not vulned. However, if you did an average of five hits at 2k each, the average soul split damage you would do out of this is about 4,750, meaning you end up doing a lot more damage. So abilities such as Gricko and Bleeds are incredibly important with ECB. When using Onslaught with range, you can use Hydrix Bolts when draining Adrenaline to get an extra hit, and you can also switch to Onyx Bolts as soon as it gets to draining your health, which gives you a chance to heal up quite a big amount, which could also provide you with an extra hit as well. Just be careful if you do heal up towards the end, it can still cost you a ton of health to actually do the next hit, and of course, the more hits you do, the more damage you take. So just be careful that this doesn't kill you by getting an extra hit in, but it actually doing more damage than you have left. Okay, so moving on to some defense ability tips now. These are going to be pretty important for getting you through certain boss fights. And of course, understanding your defense abilities is probably going to be one of the biggest things you can do to help yourself in PvM. So, let's get started. The first one we're going to start with is, a lot of people don't realize that you can use debilitate without a shield, of course. However, if you equip a shield, so if I chuck on my merciless kite shield here, it will actually increase the duration the debilitate will last because I have a shield equipped. Unequipping the shield will stop that, but we got a 14 second debilitate just because we had the shield equipped. If you need to tank stuff for a little bit longer, it's absolutely worth chucking on a shield before you use debilitate to make sure you get the longest duration possible out of it. When wanting to resonance a big hit from a boss when you are still being hit by other monsters, for example at hell where you may want to resonance the big swipe he does, but at the same time the wolves are going to be piling on you taking away that resonance hit. If you save your res for the very last tick, you can use that and it will always guarantee that the biggest hit that is applied at the same time will be resonanced. So the wolves hit will not take the big hit and you can ensure you get a big heal. This is also really useful for places like Teller to resonance the hold still on phase 3 and also resonancing the so much power as well. Next up, you can use defense abilities that don't deal damage when the target is using something like a reflect ability such as the Araxi web. For example, if I put on my shield now and I use preparation and then I use provoke and then anticipate, you'll see my adrenaline does go up even though I'm not dealing any damage to the target. You can use this to keep getting adrenaline when Araxi is using web and when other targets are using reflects and you cannot attack. 
If you need to resonance an attack, but there is multiple targets hitting you, if they are using different combat styles than the attack you want to resonance, you can use devotion and pray against those to make sure that the only hit that does go through is the one that you want to res. For example, at the Ambassador, if you don't kill all of these spinners around the room, he will do explosions of typeless damage. You can resonance this to reduce the damage down to zero. However, he will fire a range hit directly before using the explosion. You can wait for the range hit to hit you and then use resonance, or you could use devotion and pray range and use resonance straight away. This way, devotion will block the range hit and resonance will not be taken from that. When you are stunned, you can still manually click your equipment in your inventory to equip that gear. This can be incredibly useful in places like Rapture if you get stunned by the magic bomb and you haven't used Anticipate and Freedom is on cooldown. You can click your shield or your defender and spam resonance so that as soon as the damage hits, you can res that damage and not get yourself killed. Alright, so now we're moving on to some general tips. So these will just be random stuff from around the game that are useful to know about. The first one is going to be that soul split healing is calculated before the damage is actually dealt. This means before any reductions and anything that stops the damage from actually going through, you'll still get the healing that you would have got depending on how much damage you would have done in the first place. The good example of this is if you're attacking Zuck when he is invulnerable, you can see your health still goes up as it does work out the damage you would have dealt and then it gives you the healing for that. You can add scrolls to your familiar or your ripper demon is probably the one you're going to be using by just clicking on your ripper demon to summon it and then clicking on the scroll icon down here. They will hand over the max amount of scrolls it will give or however many you have in your inventory. This is a lot easier than trying to click your scrolls and then finding your familiar when it's in the pile of familiars up there by the wars chest and you have to move away. Just click that and you can hand it to it. Right click it and you can take them all back as well. This tip is one I've mentioned a few times in the past, but people always get surprised by it because there's always people who just had no idea. There is a cape called the Spirit Cape in the Dungeoneering Reward Shop. It is a item that is super useful to have as what it will do is reduce the amount of special attack that familiars need to use to use a special attack. So a Ripper Demon will be able to use more special attacks for a full spec bar than if you didn't have this. What it also means is that if you use a Spiritual Prayer Potion or a Summoning Potion, you will get more out of it as it still restores the same amount, but the familiar using the spec doesn't need to spend as much. The cape does not need to be equipped. It can just sit in your bank and it costs 45,000 Dungeoneering tokens and requires level 50 in Defense, Summoning and Dungeoneering. This one's more of a convenience, but in your bank, you don't actually have to come out of the bank to be able to drink weapon poisons, anti-poisons, or summon a familiar. What you can do is while you're in here, if you want, you can just take any whatever dose you need out of the bank, right click it in your inventory and press apply. You can apply the weapon poison, you can drink the anti-poison, and then you can summon your yak directly from here. Summoning the yak or any familiar will close the bank interface, but you don't have to close that, summon it, and go back in. You can just summon it and go straight back in. Similar to the last tip, if you want to drop an item from your bank, you don't actually have to take it out of the bank, come out and then drop it on the floor. What you can do is when you are in the bank, literally just take out the item that you want to drop. For example, we'll use this large blunt rune salvage, take it out as a noted item, then you just drag it off the edge here, anywhere that's not in the bank. And then that will drop that directly to the floor. As you can see, it is here on the floor. If it was an item that gets destroyed, it will ask if you want to destroy it, and then you just say yes, and it will be gone. It does not close your bank interface, so this makes doing stuff like this in the bank a hell of a lot easier. Next up, you can drag your pocket slot item to your action bar to make sure you can toggle it on and off. However, the best way to do this is if you just take the item off, and then drag the actual icon of the pocket slot to a keybind. This way, no matter what you equip when you put something on, it will automatically update that icon and it will let you toggle that no matter what it is. So if I change this to my grimoire, for example, it will update the icon to a grimoire and I can toggle the grimoire on and off just by pressing that keybind. Next up, if you blade a dive and surge on the exact same tick, you travel a long distance in a very quick amount of time, but also you can use this to avoid the aggro of enemies in places like elite dungeons or anywhere else that you may want to avoid it. All you need to do, like I say, is blade a dive and surge at the exact same time, like this. When keybinding things like switches or bladed dive, for example, it is a good idea to place all of the keybinds in a row so it makes it nice and easy for you to do. For example, you can see I have my bladed dive switch set to L and K, and then I have the actual bladed dive ability set to the semicolon, which is the key straight after those. So when I want to blade a dive, all I have to do is, is roll my fingers across all of those and then click. It makes it nice and easy and it will make it super simple like this. Just like that, nice and easy. Then I just go back to my staff and we're good to go. If you find yourself getting towards the end of boss kills and you haven't used up all your food, consider changing your fish or any solid food into blubber jellyfish. You could change it to green or blue depending on how much normal food you normally use, but 
Basically, these will not cost you adrenaline to use, and you can still combo eat them with Sardom and Brews. So you save yourself adrenaline, which will then translate into more DPS, and not only that, you will likely save yourself a fair bit of money as well. As a PvMer, you should absolutely be using the Protect Item Prayer. However, you can combine this if you have a higher death cost with either the Powder of Item Protection, which you can buy off the Grand Exchange, or you could make yourself a Portent of Item Protection, which is cheaper as of making this video, but it does take up an inventory space, and you do need the Divination Levels for it. Using both of these, the Prayer and the Items, you can actually save yourself five items on death, which ends up meaning that you can save yourself a lot of money every time you die. You can save yourself a lot of time banking if you make yourself a banking preset. So on my preset number one, I have a banking preset and in here I have everything I could need when I am banking, except for when I've run out of pretty much everything because I'm stupidly poor at the moment. But I have all my room pouches where I can fill up all my room pouches if I need to. I have my incense sticks, I have my familiar with scrolls, any pages that I need to recharge my book with, even though we don't have grimoire pages at the moment, and we have weapon poison, overloads, and any sort of restores that we need. I would also have item protection powders down here, but I also don't have any of those left either. But this is super useful and can save you a lot of time, and you can just load that, drink your weapon poison for example, go back into your bank, load your preset, and head back off to whatever boss you're doing. You can get yourself effortless DPS increases by using things like vulnerability bombs, using weapon poisons and stacking that with cinder banes as well, and using incense sticks before the fight if they are relevant. These are important to know about because they can, like I said, give you free DPS, and other than throwing a vulnerability bomb once every now and again during a fight, you will not have to do anything else during the fight because the weapon poison lasts 12 minutes and incense sticks can be charged to last a full hour, so they are effortless increases in DPS as long as you use them in the right place at the right time. And as mentioned, weapon poison does stack with cinder bane gloves, so you want to use those together all the time. If your boss is poisonable, you want to use cinderbane gloves, weapon poison. It's a ton of damage and you do nothing for it. Very similar to the ECB dealing more damage when you use lots of smaller hits rather than bigger ones, it is exactly the same for healing with soul split. So to heal back with soul split, the better things that you can do is use both of your bleeds, make sure one of them is walked of course, and then use smaller hits like greater ricochet or greater concentrated blast and these will heal you a lot faster than other things will as of course it is exactly the same, you'll have diminishing returns the higher your hitting. So for our final four tips, these are going to be covered under other. Now, what I mean by this is they're not going to be specifically things you do in game, but they are going to be tips that you should take into account because they're really important. The first one is going to be that learning PVM takes a hell of a long time. It does. For a lot of people, for most people, you're going to be spending a lot of time dying to bosses and trying over and over again. It takes a lot of effort to get used to it. And personally, it took me a hell of a long time to get to where I am now. And I still have so much to learn, like so, so much to learn. So do keep in mind that it does take a lot of time to actually improve at this and get a lot better. And it is kind of a frustrating journey. So if you do feel like you're not progressing, you're not improving and that you just can't do it, trust me, this is normal. And you just need to take a little bit of a step back, get back to it later on, and you'll be absolutely fine. The next tip that I have for you is if you are struggling to learn something, one, make sure you're using guides and figure out how you can do it through that. But two, ask people in the community for any advice as well. One, you could ask me personally, that's fine. My DMs on Discord are always open. And there's been plenty of occasions now where I've taken people's clips from kills and had a look through them and given them advice on that to help them improve. That being said, being part of a clan or being part of a Discord server to ask questions in will help you out a hell of a lot. So if you don't have Discord, maybe download it and jump in the link below in the description to my server, but also get in the clanning game and ask any questions you have. Don't just struggle along, ask the questions, people will be happy to help. Moving on, if you are the sort of person like me who would look at something that they want to unlock, for example dominion mines and see the requirements that is blocking that and think you know what this just isn't worth it i'm not going to bother doing this i really want them but that's a lot of quests honestly just get them out of the way it may take you a few hours to do it but once you've done that it will make your life a lot more easy and more convenient for the rest of the time you're playing you'll always have those it will always help out and trust me they do help in quite a lot of situations there's a lot of other things like this as well like a lot of people put off getting ancient curses a lot of people are putting off getting the city at sentistin quest done honestly all these unlocks are absolutely worth the time so get into it get them done and trust me once you are done you'll be glad that you did it so for the final tip is one that i mentioned quite a bit and tell people fairly often in videos like this and that is to make sure that you don't judge yourself compared to other players other players that are getting like two minute two minute 30 rapture kills and you may be getting four or five minute kills do not look at their kill times and go well i'm just rubbish i can't do it it's not happening i have the same gear they're just way faster than me and it's just ridiculous don't judge yourself at that and don't look at that and think like oh i'm just bad at the game 
They've probably done thousands more Rakshakills kills than you, or if not Rakshakills, kills, they've probably done thousands more bosses and PVM experiences than you have. Unless there's a very specific reason, that's usually what it comes down to. So if there's anyone that you should be comparing yourself to, it should be the last kill that you did as yourself. If you did a 5 minute 50 kill the first time at Raksha and you really want to improve, then you should only compete with that 5 minute 50. Try and get a 5 minute 40. Try and get a 5 minute 30. And eventually you will improve and you'll see those personal records. And every time you get a personal record, that is improvement. And that's the person you should be competing with. Don't put yourself down because you're not doing the same kill times as everybody else yet. You'll get there. Just keep going. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of our 50 PVM related tips and tricks. I hope you found something useful in here. I hope that some of the stuff in here was new to you. I know it's been a long one. It's been about 30 minutes, but if you have got this far, let me know in the comments that you've seen the whole thing. I'd be very interested to see how many of those people actually get this far. And of course, I do reply to as many comments as possible. If you did learn something new or if you did just enjoy the video, do leave a like as it does help the video get suggested to others. Also, if you are new around here and you enjoyed this video and you like this sort of content, I do tend to do stuff like this fairly often however this is a sort of new thing trying to do so many in one video to see how it goes and see what you guys think but of course if you are new then do subscribe last but not least thank you so much to the channel members that support the channel that bit extra each and every month is very much appreciated and you guys help out more than you can probably imagine your names have been on screen of course as they always are and i really do appreciate it if anyone else is interested in joining the channel members you do get a couple of perks and you can also click the join button by the subscribe button and it will give you a pop-up showing you what perks you can get and Anyway, thank you all so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.